Paolo is an internationally renowned expert when it comes to the Amazon rainforest, who led a groundbreaking initiative on the impact of deforestation. Carlos, I just want to get your reaction on what we heard from a correspondent, what uh, the news coming out of this summit. Uh, a lot was accomplished, but a major thing about uh, having a common goal uh, on how to stop deforestation in the Amazon, they failed, uh, they fell short. So what, I what is your take? Yes, uh, certainly we expect that all eight Amazonian countries would agree on getting to zero deforestation, zero forest degradation by 2030, even before 2030. We have the COP30 2025 here in, in Berlin, in the Amazon. So, however, uh, some countries did not agree with that, although Brazilian President Lula and Colombia's President Petro also said they will pursue, they will achieve these uh, targets. Uh, so that was a little bit of a disappointment. Not all Amazonian countries agree on getting to zero deforestation, but we are, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic that countries, most of Amazonia countries, those with highest deforestation rates, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, will really go in the direction of getting to zero deforestation. I'm pretty sure it's doable, it's possible to get to zero deforestation by 2030. Clearly a main declaration, a lot of commitments, but Carlos, I'm just curious why this was such a contentious issue, this issue of uh, finding a common goal on deforestation. Why the division? It seems so simple. Yes, indeed, it seems so simple. However, uh, in countries, many countries, for instance, uh, Bolivia, there is increasing deforestation due to soy crop farms. In, in, soy crops are in, in invading the forest all in all of the Amazon, it's mostly it's mostly cattle ranches, the pastures. But uh, in Bolivia, there's a lot of soy farms, and these are agribusiness is very powerful in most Amazonian countries. In let's say in Guyana and Suriname, also there is an uh, increase in the mining. So th therefore, these economic sectors they press a lot not to have the zero deforestation targets. That would be my explanation why we did not succeed in getting all eight Amazonian countries signing this agreement. Carlos, the fact that this summit even happened, uh, Lula managed to bring leaders of eight countries together in Belém to have the discussion, to have a brainstorming session. Is that by itself an achievement considering where Brazil was just a few years ago under President Jair Bolsonaro? Absolutely. This is the first time there is a, a, a meeting, a summit at this scale with all eight Amazonian countries. Never happened before. And so therefore, all these countries were looking for sustainable development for the Amazon, particularly, you know, giving a lot of benefits to the indigenous people, local communities, education, science and technology for a new economy, a bioeconomy of standing forest for the Amazon. So in that sense, it was very positive, historical summit. Three decades ago, Carlos, you projected a not very encouraging scenario for the Amazon uh, rainforest. Do you still, are you still discouraged? It sounds like you're a little bit more optimistic about the future. Well, I'm optimistic about the future because we have nature-based solutions. Zero deforestation, zero forest degradation, zero fires. And also, let's create in the Amazon the largest forest restoration project in the global tropics. We can restore more than one million square kilometers. So therefore, the secondary forest growing very fast, it will prevent from reaching the tipping point. The document, the, the summit's document, mentioned that the Amazon is very, very close to the tipping point of becoming open canopy degraded ecosystem. So we have really to find solutions, nature-based solutions, and also, of course, how to develop a new economy in the Amazon with all the forests standing, 
the, the rivers there, maintaining to end the pollution, the mercury pollution of the rivers, which is terrible. So therefore, that's why I'm optimistic, because we have nature-based solutions, science and technology, jointly with the knowledge of indigenous people and local communities. That's the pathway for a sustainable future for the Amazon. All right, and we'll leave it there on that optimistic note. Carlos Nobre, thank you so much.